Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. Qala tabaraka wa ta'ala kama warda fi surat al-Rahman hal jazau al-ihsani illa al-ihsan rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlu al-uqdatan min lisan yafqahu qawli wa ja'al li waziran min ahli amin ya rabbal alamin. Allahumma ja'alna min al-muhsinin amin ya rabbal alamin. So how are you guys doing right now? Alhamdulillah. So before I can start, I will just have two requests. One is uh, that please, if you can all fulfill the sunnah for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam right now, and that is the sunnah of a smile. Can you all smile right now? Alhamdulillah. So in other words, do not give me a look of death. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Second uh, request is that this topic, as he was announcing, the hadith of Ahsan or hadith of Jibril, is extremely academic. And ulama have wrote dozens and dozens of pages only on this hadith. So since this is a very academic topic, I would expect you to pay attention as our many options have changed. So please try to pay attention as much as you can. And on my side, what I will do, inshallah, I'll try to make it as practical as I can or as relatable or relevant as I can, inshallah. So the first two, three minutes, I will going to take on the academic definition. The rest of the minutes, inshallah, it's all practical stuff, inshallah. Hope you can bear that, inshallah. So let's start. What is ihsan? The Arabic word ihsan comes from husn also, from the same root husn, which means beautiful. So first thing we know about ihsan is beautiful. Second way of explaining ihsan is excellent. So beautiful and excellent. Third, the prophetic way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the word ihsan when Jibreel alaihi salam came to him. And he says, Akhbirni anil ihsan. Tell me about what is ihsan in Islam. So he says, That you worship Allah. Ihsan is that you worship Allah as though as you are looking at Allah. And if that is not possible for you, then at least assume that Allah is looking at you wherever you are. This is Ihsan according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So he added a new dimension to this meaning of Ihsan. Now the meaning of Ihsan is not only beautiful. Now the meaning of Ihsan is not only excellent. The meaning of Ihsan is also to do whatever you are doing with, com with complete concentration. With utmost concentration. That as though as you are looking at Allah or if that's not possible, you have to assume that Allah is looking at you. Are you following me? So far, three definitions came, right? The fourth and the final thing on the technical definition of Ihsan before we can open the chapter of the practical sides of Ihsan is that there is one ayah of the Quran out of many ayat which talks about Ihsan in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Allah asks you, Allah commands you to do justice and to do ihsan. If you are listening to this carefully, and if you are not sleeping right now, I can see some of you are. But which one came first, justice or ihsan? Justice. Allah orders you to do justice and to do ihsan. Although justice is a very praiseworthy act in Islam. But you know what is justice? Justice is to give the rights of people, right? Whatever you deserve, if I will give you, it will be a justice behavior. If I will get my right, it will be a just, just behavior. But then comes Ihsan. As some scholars say, the reason of mentioning Ihsan after justice, Ihsan is to actually give people more than what they deserve. Ihsan is to take sometimes less than what you deserve. This is Ihsan. To give something to people what they are not expecting from you in terms of good deed, that is Ihsan. Literally, Ihsan means Ahsanu ila fulan, yani an'amu ila fulan, to give favor to someone. So, in short, before we can go to the practical side, whatever I discuss in the academic things, the first meaning of Ihsan is beautiful, to do whatever you are doing with the beauty, beautiful attitude in your mind. Second is to do with the excellent attitude to do with the full concentration that Allah is looking at you or you are looking at Allah. And the fourth, many times you have to give people what 
more than what they deserve, more than what is expected from you. This is Ihsan in Islam. Now, this was the academic side. Now come to the practical side. I will mention four kinds of Ihsan, and please remember this. Please remember this. First Ihsan is Ihsan with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Having beautiful relationship and excellent uh, relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Traditionally speaking, whenever you will read any book of hadith or explanation of hadith which talks about the explanation of this hadith, they actually reduce the meaning to salah. But actually it goes beyond than salah. But it starts with salah. That when you are making salah, your body, your heart, your mind should focus on who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many a times when we pray salah, you know what's going on? When we are praying salah, our body is standing in front of Allah. But in our mind, I'm thinking about how many people have liked my Facebook and Instagram selfie, duck face selfie. That's what, we, that's what people are thinking. If you are a doctor, you're thinking about patient. If you are think, if you are imam, you are thinking about the board members, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Yeah, this was a creepy joke. But anyway, on a serious note, on a serious note, when you are standing in front of Allah, you have to think your mind, your mind, your heart, your body have to concentrate on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimahullah, brought this statement actually in his book. He says, when people are standing in front of Allah and then they get distracted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at that time, Ya Abdi, O oh my slave, Ila Ain, where are you going? Ila Khairam Minni? Did you find something better than me? Just imagine if we are standing in front of Allah and if we are thinking about all other things, they might be important, but not as important as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to bring this humility khushu in our salah, ameen ya rab, so that we can manifest ihsan. But having said that, ihsan should not be reduced only to salah. Ihsan should not be reduced only to other modes, modes of worship. The second point which I wanted to discuss, ihsan actually comes in the dealings with the people. And that is what I want to actually speak today. Interestingly, when you will read the traditional books, some books only reduce the meaning of ihsan with salah or with ibadat. But when you will open Quran, and when you will going to see word ihsan, most of the time Allah himself have used the word ihsan in terms of dealing with the people. So ihsan cannot come in your life if you are not bringing that excellent and beautiful attitude in terms of dealing with the people. So this is the second point I want to discuss. Ihsan with the people and within people, if you will just double click the people folder, the closest to you is whom? Your friends or your family, right? The closest to you. So let's just start Ihsan with family. That's the second thing, Ihsan with Allah. And second thing is Ihsan with family. Who comes in family? Let's just start with parents. You know the famous ayah in the Quran, Wabil walidaini Ihsana. Not one, twice, thrice, four, five times Allah repeated this phrase in the Quran. That in terms of your parents, you have to deal with them with ihsan, with the most beautiful, with the most excellent attitude. Allah did not use the word ita'a, that you have to obey them only. No. It's much above and beyond than obedience. You have to be nice to them. That is ihsan. You have to honor them and give them respect. Sometimes when your parents are old, they will, sh they will share the same old story 10 times, right? And you might say, Abba, you have already shared this so many times. Bring something new. No, give them respect. This is not Ihsan. Give them respect. Share good news with them. Avoid sharing bad news with them. If they are talking to you, avoid texting. I know this is makru for some people. But do it. And as I am talking, I'm not saying I'm the most idealistic son. Even I have the issues. I have to make dua for you, you have to make dua for me. Then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the son who have ihsan with their parents. Ameen, Ya Rabb. One of the interesting things in the Quran you will see, Allah says how many times you have to do parent, uh, ihsan with parents? Five times. But not a single time you will see that Allah have used the word ihsan, you have to do ihsan with your kids. Subhanallah. 
Five times Allah is reminding us you have to do ihsan, nice behavior with your parents. Not a single time Allah says the word ihsan with kids. You know the reason why? It does not mean that from now, from now on, whenever this conference will finish, whenever I will see my kids, I will going to slap them. Badang! Abba, why? No, because Allah didn't mention that I have to be nice with you. <laughs> no. There's a reason why is that so. First, as a parent, generally speaking, you don't need a reminder that you have to take care of your kids. It's very natural, right? And then there is a second Quranic evidence. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say that you have to be nice with your kids, but Allah said something. Allah says in Surah Al-Rahman, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانُ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانُ If I am nice with my parents, when my kids are looking at me, then when they will grow old and I will become older, they will compensate this ihsan because Allah says, Al Jazawul Ihsanu illa al ihsan. The reward of ihsan is nothing but ihsan, subhanAllah. There's another way of looking at this. If when they are young, my kids, when they cannot speak and I have to be nice to them, when they will grow old, they will compensate this ihsan. Al Jazawul Ihsanu illa al ihsan. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to be a right role model for our kids. Just imagine if I'm yelling at my father, if I'm screaming at my mother in front of my kids, what they will learn. When they will grow old, they will do the same. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to stay away from being disobedient kids. Ameen, Ya Rabb. But only ihsan with parents, is that what Allah is asking? No. Who, comes, who else comes in family apart from parents and the kids? Tell me, who else? Wife and husband, right? The most spicy like shan masala on top of biryani. Yeah? Even we have to be nice with our spouse. You know, as an imam in this country for the last six years, who is involved actively in marital counseling, one of the big problems, at least for an American Muslim community, when you're talking to the husbands and wife, one of the big problems is that all these spouses are talking about Imam Asif, but this is my right. They cannot see above and beyond what's their right. This is his obligation, this is my right. This is her obligation and this is my right. What we discuss about Ihsan, Ihsan is sometimes to give more than what he deserves, what his right. Ihsan is to give something more than what she deserves. This is Ihsan. If you'll think about rights and obligation only, then might be it's not a good attitude towards the happy marital life. And I'll give you a few examples for this. The one basic example is look at Rasulullah sallallahu as a role model, as a spouse. You know, one of the famous incidents where Aisha radiallahu anha was asked about his character and all the husbands and wife listened to this conversation, subhanAllah. Aisha was asked by some other companion, can you tell me about the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And there are many narrations to it. You know, one narration where she said, Kana idha dakhala daruhu bassaman. Whenever my husband, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would come back to home after work, he would have a smile on his face. Just take a pause and ask yourself if you are married. Can you raise hand? How many of you are married here? Husbands? Yeah. You can, you can feel proud, yeah. <laughs> okay. Can your wife say this about you? When they are being asked, can you tell me about your husband character? Can they say this? Oh no, when my hubby comes, he always have a sweet smile. <laughs> I know what they have to say, right? Usually they have a big complaint list. Aisha is saying this, imagine wife is saying this in the absence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So it's not like talking on Facebook, it's talking on WhatsApp. <laughs> and then she actually continued, وَكَانَ فِي خِدْمَةِ أَهْلِهِ And then Rasulullah, when he would come back, he would serve the family members. He did not say, I am the husband, I am the prophet, you guys have to serve me. No. He served the family members. What kind of service? يَقْثِلُ ثَوَّهُ وَيَخْصِفُ نَعْلَهُ He used to do the laundry. He used to clean the house. He used to do the dishes. Even this is sunnah. You know, sometimes as an imam, when you'll go into the walima or wedding feast, people will come to you and they will going to bring sweets. Baklava, barzbuza, khir, gulab jamun. And they will say, imam, this is sweet. And this is sunnah. 
to eat sweet. Yes, even this is sunnah, to clean your own clothes. <laughs> to do the laundry is a sunnah. It's not as sweet as eating sweets. It might be bitter for some people, but it is sweet. You might think if Rasulullah sallallahu is doing this, where are his family? وَقَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Hadith continues. نَحْنُ نَكْفِيكَ هَذَا We would do this for you. We are here for you. Then he would say, أَفَلَا أَخْدِمُكُمْ لِي سَاعَةً Rasulullah would say, no, no, no. If I'm here, let me do it. Once I will go, then you can do it. Let me serve you. SubhanAllah. This is what we define as a beautiful attitude as a spouse. Excellent attitude as a spouse. He was more busy than me and you. He had more responsibilities than me and you. Talking about family size, he, his family size was more bigger than me, our, ours. But subhanAllah, still he had the time of manifesting that ihsan in his personal life. So don't think about your rights only. Try to think about giving what other people uh, need for creating that harmony. Don't misconstrue my conversation by the way. That if other person is abusing you and you are saying, no, no, this is ihsan, I will let him abuse. No. At that time, you have to have that fine line. But some time to give away from your right, some time to give the person what he deserves or more than what he deserves actually, it's okay for creating the harmony in long term in your marital life. You know, many times the most common question which comes in the marital uh, issues, it is also related with Ihsan, dealing with the in-laws, alayhim as -salam. Yeah, yeah, dealing with the in-laws. So many times people will say, oh, I don't have to serve my mother-in-law or father-in-law where it's written in Quran, where it's mentioned in Hadith. Again, we are going back to rights. If I want my spouse to be nice with my parents, to do ihsan with my parents. Guess what? Al jazaw ihsan illa ihsan. I have to be nice with my in-laws also. Even though that is not right, technically speaking, let's say if you'll go into the legal, if you'll play the legal card, but we are talking about ihsan, which is above and beyond than the legal, legal rights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand this, inshallah, in a proper context. One final thing before we can move to the third thing on this um, uh, ihsan with the family members and ihsan with the family. You know, it's really funny that usually when people get married, in the first few days of marriage, it's a state of ihsan. You don't need to teach a husband and wife when they will get married within the honeymoon phase that you have to do ihsan with your spouse. It's already above and beyond the ihsan. Even when wife take a sneeze, Achy! water come out of the nose, and husband will think, Abe Zamzam is coming out of her nose, right? <laughs> on a serious note, the reality will come when the same sneeze will come after three years, and then it will spoil your food. <laughs> and then you have to build, develop that ihsan. By the way, don't try this. That's okay, now do sneeze on the food. But generally speaking, we have to bring ihsan, the ability to forgive, the motivation to forgive, uh, so that we can actually enjoy the good, happy marital life, inshallah. So I mentioned two things so far. Ihsan with Allah. Ihsan with? Sleeping. Family. Okay. Last two things before I can end. And I mentioned I will mention four things, but actually I will make it four and a half, inshallah. Third thing. Ihsan with community members. Some of us, we might be very nice with our family. But that nice behavior does not manifest our dealing with the community members when you are in the masjid, when you are with your extended community, whether they are Muslims or non-Muslims, especially dealing with the non-Muslims that have to come also with ihsan. What is the literal meaning of ihsan? Just want to quiz you. Beautiful, right? Excellent, right? It have to come in the way even when you are driving the car. When we drive the car, we Muslim, what is our average speed, average Muslim speed? <laughs> it's always 10, 15 miles above than the average limit, right? This is not the most beautiful way to drive a car. This is not Ihsan. When we park our car in the masjid parking lot, are we following Ihsan? We will pray Salah right now, inshallah, you will see. Look at the way we will put our shoes. <laughs> this will tell you a lot about our mental attitude, how far we are from Ihsan. And then actually it comes even dealing with the non-Muslims. Tell me, in this country, in America, we have to deal with Muslims or non-Muslims most of the time? Tell me. Non-Muslims, unless you are Imam of the Masjid. <laughs> yeah? Most of the times, non-Muslims. If you are working, you will be surrounded by non-Muslims. If you are at school, surrounded by non-Muslims. 
there was one prophet, Yusuf alayhi salam. Allah mentioned something about him in the Quran. If you remember his story, I'll relate it with our life. He went into the prison. He was accused of something, he went into the prison. He was the only Muslim at that time surrounded by non-Muslims. And usually, in the prison, do you find good kind of people or bad kind of people? Usually. They're criminals, thugs most of the time, that's why they are in prison. So they are criminals, they are thugs, and they are non-Muslim, and Yusuf alayhi salam is the only Muslim person. What happened that two of those prisoners saw a dream, and they went to Yusuf alayhi salam for the dream interpretation, they did not go to anyone else, and the reason why they go to Yusuf alayhi salam, they brought it up, they say, inna naraka min al Subhanallah, again ihsan. Yusuf, can you give us a dream interpretation of these two things? The reason why we came to you is because you have an amazing character, Yusuf. You have Ihsan in your character. How they can say this? Imam Razi mentioned Yusuf al Islam used to serve the prisoners without asking them for any reward. Now apply this in our life. When we are surrounded by non Muslims, whether in school or at work, does these non Muslim come to us for their spiritual problems? No. You know why? Because we ourselves have spiritual problems. I'll give you an example. Let's say if you are the only Muhammad who is working in this ABC company. And you know, when Zohar time comes, Muhammad have to do what? Muhammad have to pray Zohar. But before Zohar, what he have to make? Wudu. And he will go to the restroom to make Wudu, but he will make sure the entire restroom will do Ghusl. <laughs> so talented. <laughs> Each and every corner will be wet. Means we are wasting 10 times more water than what Rasulullah used to just to make wudu. And then when Muhammad will come out, and then Samantha will go. And Samantha will say, Muhammad, what you did? And Muhammad will say, this is Islam. <laughs> you got my point? And then we we'll say, oh, these non-Muslims hate Islam. Actions speak louder than words. When this Muhammad will follow the legacy of Muhammad Rasulullah in terms of Ihsan, then you will see these non-Muslims will come to you. You don't have to go to them for their own spiritual problems and then we can heal that also inshallah. So this is Ihsan with community also. The last, the fourth thing, inshallah. I don't know how much time I have. I was lost in the clock, but anyway. So one and a half thing is left, the fourth thing, and then the last conclusion, inshallah. So just to summarize, Ihsan with Allah, then. Ihsan with family, then. Ihsan with community, both Muslims and non-Muslims. And then the fourth thing will come. And I would say perhaps it's the hardest thing in terms of understanding and applying Ihsan in our life. We have to do Ihsan, nice behavior, beautiful attitude, excellent attitude, to even haters or Islamophobes. I know this is hard. When some person in Muslim community or in your own family backbites you, or when person stabs at your back, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to do ihsan, first of all, where did Allah ask us to do ihsan with such bad behavior? Go and read Surah Fussilat. Allah says, idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Again, ihsan. That you have to be nice to those people who are actually acting in an evil way with you. You have to respond in a very beautiful way. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was stuck on his face by the non-Muslims or Islamophobes at that time. Blood started coming out, and you know what came out from his tongue? He says, "Allahumma qfil li qawmi fa innahum la yaalamun." Allah, please forgive my nation as they do not know who I am. They do not know I'm a prophet. So they are doing this out of ignorance. This is ihsan with your haters. And how to apply this? By the way, this is very beautiful, uh, fascinating to hear all this ahadith and the actions of Rasulullah But the hardest thing is how to apply. When you are driving the car in Baltimore, and let's say if any Islamophobe is chasing you, and if he's giving you horn, constant horn, making your life miserable, what you will do? One attitude is you will open the window, take out shahada finger. That's one thing we can do. 
Shahada finger, Sharia compliant. Or you can say those four letter words, father, uncle, cousin, king. Or the other way is to do fulfilled ihsan, to have a smile and to just ignore that person. If we do this, there's a completely different attitude of which prophet we are following actually. Are we following the legacy of all these great prophets or are we following the legacy of any of the gangster? This talks a lot about our character and about our ihsan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to apply ihsan in all these stages of our life, inshallah. Conclusion, inshallah. I mentioned four dimensions of ihsan, but ihsan is actually, it boils down to each and every aspect of your life. If any young guy is listening to this, for Yusuf alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Yusuf five or six times the word ihsan that you, with, you were doing ihsan, you were doing ihsan. From the beginning until the end, Yusuf's entire life was talking about ihsan. When he was surrounded alone in that room, that room was locked and minister wife asked him to do something haram. He says, innahu rabbi ahsana maswai. How can I do this? My Allah gave me such a beautiful place to live. I cannot compensate this with an evil behavior. Many times our young guys, when they are alone in the room, they can do whatever they want on their cell phone. Look at whatever shameless websites you can want and you can delete the web browser history. But if you have ihsan, you know that even though no one is looking at me in my room, but who is looking at you? Allah is looking at you. Because it boils down to May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the one who have ihsan. Jazakumullah khair and hopefully you will enjoy the conference. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.